Hello there. This is the Business Day Sustainable Philanthropy series, where we speak to individuals making impact with philanthropy one day at a time. My name is Elizabeth Musa, and today I'm seated with Ms. Pamela Ebo. She is the Executive Director of the OB Jackson Foundation, which is focused on helping vulnerable communities, especially in the Southeast. Today, she'll be speaking to us all about what the OB Jackson Foundation is about and the initiatives that they embark on every day. Thank you for being here, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us some of the initiatives that your foundation, OB Jackson Foundation, prioritizes? Okay, so the OB Jackson Foundation prioritizes initiatives in the health, education, and empowerment sectors. We've been um, operating since 2010, and our remit is to help the most vulnerable people in society. We primarily focus most of our projects in Anambra State, in Okija and its environs. But over the last, I would say, three, four years, we have extended our reach to other parts of Nigeria, Ibadan, um, Lagos, and most recently in Akwa Ibom. So I, I, I know when I was doing my research, I realized that the foundation, Ubi Jackson Foundation, was mostly focused on the Southeast. Mm -hmm. But now you're saying that you've moved to other places in the south, uh, Southwest. Mm -hmm. But I was going to ask, is there a reason why it was predominantly in the Southeast? Yes, um, that's a very good question, yeah. So are the founders of, of OB Jackson Foundation, our patrons, Dr. Ernest and Mrs. Mariam Obiejasi, are from the Southeast, Okija in especially. And having been, um, they are the founders of Nest Oil and with extension, through extension of that, the OP Jackson Foundation, uh, they wanted to give back to their community, um, which is fair and the right thing to do. So they started with that focus in mind to really help people transform the people, first of all, in Okija and Anambra and the environs in the Southeast. Oh, oh, great. So what are some of the main objectives of the OB Jackson Foundation and how do they align with Nigeria's goal as a, con a country itself? Okay, so we're very much aligned with the UN Development Sustainable Development Goals 2030. And like I said, we focus on some of those goals, health care, education, and empowerment. And our main thing is to really get to the grassroots level, to helping people. Our ethos and our mission statement is we're transforming communities one life at a time. And I think that when you have an opportunity to reach to the grassroots where the real issues are and help people one by one, that community is transformed and then they can go on and help other people as well. So that's very much our focus. And in terms of Nigeria, we're at a stage in this country where um, we have so many pressing issues in healthcare sector, lack of skills, recently brain drain, people leaving the country, we have education people, children who are out of out of school, uh, you know, with with empowerment, helping people who have been to university come out, no jobs. So our focus is really to to be able to help that one life at a time in the communities that we serve. And I imagine that obviously with the kind of work that you do, there will be many challenges and that you have to overcome on a day-to-day -day basis. So what are some of these challenges and how are you able to overcome them daily? Implementing um, projects, I mean. Right. So I think one of the biggest challenges for, I'll give you an example. So one of the challenges right now that we have, uh, we've recently partnered with an organization called Hospitals for Humanity, and they focus on helping children with congenital heart disease. Um, in this country, there are about 90,000 children born every year with that situation. And um, in most countries out in the United States, in England, if a child is born with a heart issue, within the first three months of their life, they have corrective surgery. Here, we not only have a challenge of not having the skills, enough skills, and we don't have enough hospitals that deal with that. We're not even aware that this is a problem. So. We've recently partnered with this organization to try to, first of all, create awareness. Secondly, 
build up the skill set of nurses and doctors in this country and help transform those children who have that issue. So that's some of the challenges we also have in the Southeast. We all know that, particularly in a number of state, there have been you know, security issues. So sometimes that is a challenge in terms of how, much, how many people we can reach because of the security challenges in the Southeast. Mm-hmm. And then speaking of reach, how are you able to measure the impact that you make in this community that you serve? Okay, so we, we do have uh, you know, our matrices, uh, monitoring and um, learning uh, you know, matrices that we use. Not only that, like I said, one of the things I think that is quite unique about our foundation is that we are very granular. We go into the grassroots level. So it's not just about us giving money and saying, here, use this money. We have a team of people who are dedicated to going into the communities, seeing the needs and meeting those needs. And so we very much build a relationship at every level, whether it's the, the village you know, chief, you know, the schools. So we build a relationship with them so we can measure our impact. Um, I'll give you another example. Recently, we were able to have an opportunity to go to Aqua Ibom and uh, help transform some of the prisons there. They reached out to us and they wanted us to come and help with helping the prisoners get vocational skills. So not only did we help release the prisoners through paying their minor fines, but we made sure that they got some vocational training and then gave them some money, empowerment money, to open up their shops. And then six months later, we went back to see how they were doing. So we're able to track how they're doing Mm -hmm. and we'll keep tracking how they're doing so that they don't reoffend, they don't go back into a life of crime. Mm -hmm. And that's the sustainable philanthropy that we are talking about. Exactly. There is a question that many times when we are having these conversations, people often wonder, how do you get funding for the work that you do? Okay, so we are very lucky in the sense that um, our founders, predominantly a lot of the money that we get as a foundation comes from the uh, founders who are philanthropists. However, in recent times, we are looking to extend our reach and get funding from international organizations. So um, predominantly that. We are also, um, as I speak, we're planning a fundraising event to raise funds for, like I mentioned, that initiative for children with congenital heart disease. So a lot of our funding at the moment comes from within, but we are poised to start looking outside because we need to be sustainable and we cannot just rely on our founders for that. So do you collaborate with local communities? How do you do that? Communities, government, anything Mm -hmm. else? Yes. So we, yeah, we do absolutely collaborate with local communities in Anambra State. Like I mentioned, we collaborate with the local governments there. We're we're doing quite a few initiatives right now where we have to collaborate with the Anambra State government. We're we're looking at reaching, um, diversifying into digital literacy. So I've had meetings and, you know, plans to do that within the Southeast. With our project in Ibadan, we collaborate with the Oyo State Government. In Lagos State, we have a collaboration with the Lagos State Government running a rehabilitation center in Ikorudu. And then with private partnerships, Smeden, Lagos Business School, we have different partnerships that we're building and we're looking to capitalize on those partnerships. So because of the kind of work that your foundation does, how do you ensure that there is transparency and accountability within your organization? Of course. So like every foundation, we have a board that keeps us accountable. We also make sure that um, our accounting practices are at a level where it's international. So making sure that we're spending the money that we're giving in a right way. Also, like I said, um, just making sure that we get feedback on how we're doing from our beneficiaries. Um, so we, we keep ourselves accountable in that way. So, I mean, as a foundation, you have to adapt to different things that happen. Mm-hmm. And we've had COVID-19, which changed a lot of things. Mm-hmm. What did COVID-19 change for the OB Jackson Foundation and how have you been able to 
adapt to okay. it. Okay, great. So one of the things that I think the COVID-19 did for a lot of people, not just our foundation, is different ways to put our message out there. So one of the things, like I said, we do education projects. So one of the things that we've adapted to is how to reach, have a greater reach and empower people through digital literacy. And I think in this day and age, since COVID-19, you see a lot of organizations trying to reach more people um, in terms of educationally through that. And so that's one of the things that, I've, that we have done since COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And what are the long-term goals for OB Jackson Foundation? So for us, the long-term goal is to keep reaching as many people as we can uh, within the Southeast and extend our reach to other parts of Nigeria. But most importantly, to build partnerships. I think that a, a lot of philanthropic projects or initiatives within Nigeria, you do find that there are lots of things going on, but there are not a lot of partnerships. And our goal is to reach um, a lot of other philanthropic people who are doing similar things to us and see how we can collaborate to make more sustainable impact within Nigeria. And we also being, you know, uh, in, the, in the oil and gas space as well, we also would like to start looking at projects that will be uh, sources of renewable energy for women, um, you know, especially vulnerable vulnerable communities within Nigeria as well. I mean, as a foundation, there have been lots of projects that you have carried out, mm -hmm. very impactful ones, mm -hmm. but there must be one which has probably stuck out for you, or maybe even two. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share that with us? Sure. So one of the projects that I think that I'm really proud of uh, as a foundation that we do are things that is just every day that people don't talk about. So we as a foundation, have, in the past 10 years, we have partnered with the Lagos State Government Rehabilitation Center in Ikorudu. And every week we go and we feed 1,500 people. Um, and we've built that relationship with them. And every Friday, these people look forward to seeing us, to being fed. And, you know, during the Christmas period, we, we give them care packs. We, we've gotten to know them one-on-one, -on -one, and we are trying to now find sustainable ways through vocational things that they can do. These are things that you do, you know, nobody gets to talk about, but just seeing how we can make a difference to the one person, that makes me most proud. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, like I said, this health initiative that we um, just got involved with even though it's a fairly new project that we've gotten involved with, it's far reaching. And I, I can talk about that more. More will be coming about that in a few months. But seeing children who uh, we recently had corrective surgeries for 20 children um, in, the, in the last month and seeing how that child was before and how they are now because they've gotten, you know, a, a chance at a good life makes me most proud as well because it, we're not only changing them physically health-wise we're helping change um, their social economic status um, uh, and, and and changing their family uh, dynamic completely so as a foundation how do you find the beneficiaries for these projects that you embark on this community so how do you find these people and fact check to be sure that they are the people that you should be serving? Yeah, that's a great question. So like I said to you, one of the things I think is unique about our foundation is that we are very granular. So it's predominantly we're a grant-making organization. So when we get requests to help people, we have a team who go and fact-check, make sure that those people are who they say they are. Um, you know, for example, uh, again, uh, with our health project that we have with this organization called Hospital for Humanity. We had screening. We had to check their socioeconomic status because predominantly we're helping vulnerable people. We want to help vulnerable people get corrective surgeries, not people who can afford it. So we have to fact check. Um, we ask for certain their bank details. We are very thorough in fact checking before we intervene. 
And that is not just for this project, but across the board. Even in the Southeast, we, we, uh, we have beneficiaries that we have a team that would go to their houses to check, are you who you say you are? Mm. Uh, before we intervene or we get involved in that partnership. Mm. Such a brilliant way to actually carry out the activities that you are doing here at the OB Jackson Foundation. And that brings us to the end of this interview. It's been such an enlightening conversation speaking with Ms. Pamela Ebo, the Executive Director of the OB Jackson Foundation. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Until the next episode, keep watching Business Day. You can follow us on all social media platforms at Business Day NG, and you can also check out more stories on our website, www.businessday.ng. Thanks for watching.